Welcome to Positive Personal Power with hope, aspiration, and encouragement. Our goal is to build and enhance people's confidence and strength to handle life's challenges. Now, let me introduce you to your host, Nathaniel Skula. Thankfully, uh, Mike Tobin has uh, has managed to bring in uh, Stanley uh, uh, Tucci. Right? That's is that how it's pronounced? Tucci, yes, yes. Super, super, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, and I'm 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 quite interested in in what you do and what you have done because my sister actually is based over in uh, in Hollywood. She lives uh, lives there. She's been doing voiceovers, bit of producing and and acting right. for you know f- since she was a little little kid. And uh, it's tough, oh, wow. really. It's 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 you know hats off to you to, to to get some make some success from from that is um quite a bit of know, success i'd say considering a big, big success we, yeah. we were counting the other day in in preparation for um something else you're doing with us uh, stan yes. um, we got to about 92 different films that you've made and gave up <laughs> we just said we said we said why don't you just say quite a lot <laughs> yeah, just, or, or let's just say too many <laughs> no, let's just say too many Oh, it's a fantastic career fantastic oh no, it's great you know it's great it's still a you know it, it, it no matter where you are i mean you know you're still always struggling to get things that you'd like to get that aren't coming your way or to get your own projects off the ground and all that stuff it's always a bit of a a bit of a struggle because it's a very you know it's a very fickle business mm. and it um and it's ever changing you know and it's changing, <clears throat> it's changing so quickly now with uh, streaming services. Um, it, it's kind of wonderful that, 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 that the way it's changing to me because you have, there are so many more options out there and a lot of the old models are being thrown out of the window. And um, for instance, trying to get, let's say, um, an independent movie made, and I made a number of, quite a few independent movies as an actor and I've directed five of my own independent films. Um, it's, it's a real struggle. It can take years and years and years and years and then the movie will come out and, um, and it'll be distributed in a few a handful of theaters usually. And then it disappears and it has a longer life. It used to have a longer life on DVD, but now it's, you know, ends up on Netflix or wherever it ends up. And that's great. But now, you can make, you don't have to do that route anymore. And I'm sad to say it that, you know, I don't know how much longer we're going to be going to movie theaters. Mm. Um, I love going to movie theaters, but it's more often than not that I go, that I watch a movie here. And if you're making a small independent movie and it's made by one of these streaming services, Apple, Netflix, you know, whatever, uh, HBO, whatever, you have this built, you have the built in audience Mm. and it's kind of amazing. So you're able to, you're able to get your, your, your product, your picture out there as never before. And you don't have to go through all that rigmarole of, oh, it didn't open on the weekend. Boom. You're out of the theater. Yeah. Yeah, I guess in a way it's kind of lower risk, right? Because once you've got, once you've got this, you know, the signature that you're going to do the thing and it's, and it's funded, then then you don't have to worry about kind of, you know, is it going to make the card? Is it, you know, when are they yeah. going to release it? You know, that sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. You don't, and you don't have to go through the rigmarole of sort of going from uh, city to city, showing up at, at theaters, <laughs> you know, doing talks and all that sort of stuff, which is fine. But the amount of effort and time that it takes to promote a movie that already took a huge amount of time and effort to make, yeah, it's exhausting. And then, like I said, it'll it'll show for you know a couple of weeks, and see you later. Yeah. So I think I think the way things are changing now is is it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I I uh, I did an interview the other day for my other show with a friend of mine. He he he's um, EVP for uh, a movie production company. It was very interesting talking about media and and you know the new streaming and all that kind of stuff. It's it's uh, it's very interesting. Um, but like the journey that you you guys go on as actors is is very similar to like the entrepreneurial journey of almost banging yeah. your head on a wall for years 
to try and make something work. And then eventually yeah. you, 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 you change a little bit and you find some success, right? So mm-hmm. I know Mike said, I haven't got any questions, but I, I do like to, I, I like to have a few, you know, I like to have a few, right? <laughs> and because this show is all about, it's about breaking through struggles in, in life, right? And, and right. helping people who, helping the listeners to, to, to maybe take away some, some insights, right? So what, what do you think the biggest struggles you've been through are in, in your career? I think the hardest thing originally when I first started well, sometimes the biggest struggle is against yourself. That's the, first, that's the first struggle. And the struggle against yourself is often taking yourself too seriously. And if you take yourself too seriously, you're never going to be able to achieve the kind of ease necessary um, that comes with, th- that, will bring su- that will bring success and will also bring joy. Mm. You. So once I learned not to take myself so seriously, things got easier to a certain extent. But I think the primary sort of external um, uh, obstacle was typecasting. And being of Italian descent, so I, I, I started in, 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 in this business we call show. Um, in 1982, right out of college. And, and I look Italian, I am Italian. And at that time, Italians were, were really portrayed only as mafiosi. So inevitably I played the bad guy. They always were cast as the mafioso or the villain or the whatever, or the punk and the thing and the, you know, there was, you know, it was like, you know, and it wasn't really until I got, and then I, you know, you do that first to a certain extent for a while, or even if you were playing like a cop, you were the, you became the bad cop. You, there was something, because Italians were always viewed as innately evil, right? There was no, you never had, you could have it, you could say like, <laughs> oh, the, the, this person you know, from this eth- ethnicity, the reason they're like this is because of they were poor or because their father beat them or because of blah, blah, blah. But well, Italians, you didn't need an excuse or a reason. They were just you, bad. <laughs> but it's, not, it's not just the Italians, though. I reckon you probably could, you could associate you know, Germans, Russians. You know, there's a lot of them. Yeah, there yeah. That, yeah. Ha-ha, you're German. He yeah, must be the bad guy. Nowadays, <laughs> nowadays, yeah. Nowadays, <laughs> nowadays. Well, it goes through phases as, as, as we go through things politically. <laughs> you know, that sort of changes, doesn't it? Like, all of a yeah. sudden, it was like, everybody who was Russian was bad. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. And then it was everybody who's from the Middle East. <laughs> no. And now they're trying to find different ways. It was they always have this sort of English baddie. <laughs> yeah. English baddie. But that's just been around for centuries, you know. I think Colin Firth screws that one up because you know sometimes he acts like a baddie. Yeah. Because he's very he's he's not very humorous and he's like mm. but then he's always the good guy in real life. You know? I know. <laughs> I know. Such a sweet, sweet person. Yeah, so I think that that you- that was the primary obstacle for me. And it's really just a matter of getting roles that are going to allow, allow you to show, you know, the variety that you have as an actor. Um, and then being really tough on yourself in a way and saying, no, I, I'm not going to take that role. I'll, 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 I'd rather go get a job in a, in a restaurant. Right. You know, or something like that. And, but, and- really, but really the thing is, is being able to show the diversity and being fun, being able to be funny makes a big difference to go, be able to go back and forth between being funny and, you know, something that's dramatic or, or whatever that starts to open people's minds. Have you, have you sort of regretted um, turning down a part that, that you kind of, for those reasons, for saying like, that's too sort of no. stereotypical of me. Never, and then... never, never. No, because it's... there's nothing to, there's no redeeming qualities there. Right. You know, you might have made some money or something, but it's not worth it. It's very similar to business, though, isn't it, Mike? Well, I don't know. Uh, There's a few deals I wish I'd have done that I hadn't done. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Really? Like buying, buying Zoom shares would have been one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Especially, Jeez. I put, do you know what they did to me though the other day? Like they gave me this, they gave me like a, a, a live streaming, yeah? So I, I was like, wow, they, they've given me live streaming for free. So then I started live streaming on Facebook, yeah? And it lasted like four minutes. And I was like, that's so good. I've got to do it again. And I kept, <laughs> I kept live streaming, right? And then I upgraded. Like, I mean, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> then, then, they get, then they get the money out of you. So. Yeah, it's another, <laughs> it's another 40 quid a month. I mean. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But worth every penny. How much fun is it to, to just push live on YouTube and, and, and talk about something really interesting? It's great I never fun. want to do that. <laughs> I never want to do that. Oh, I love. I, I, no, I, I, I'm so afraid of what will come out of my mouth. <laughs> do you do? Do you do much theatre work? I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> do, you do, do you do much theatre work then? Because I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't done a play. I directed a play on Broadway about eight years ago, eight nine years ago. But I and I was doing plays, uh, but I haven't done a play now for fifteen years. Because uh, I had kids, and you have this. Everybody thinks, "Well, you do the play. You do a play. You know, you work a few hours a night, and you know that's it." And it's like, no, it's the complete opposite. It's uh, the most tiring thing you somebody can do, mm -hmm. and and people don't realize how sort of labor intensive it is. Um, you know, you're doing this heightened thing for three hours a night, whatever whatever it is, and but you don't just walk in there and kind of, you know. Hey, hey, hey you know, you sort of mentally start preparing, even though you don't know you are preparing, um, at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. And then suddenly, so, and then by the time you do the play, you eat after the play, you go to bed, you know, or you're at one o'clock in the morning or whatever it is, and you have to sleep. Like you have to get your sleep because you're doing eight performances a week. Mm. So you'll have your weekend, you don't have a weekend, at least the way it's structured in, in New York. So you mm. do your Friday night show, Saturday matinee, Saturday night show, Sunday matinee. Mm. You don't see your family. You don't put your kids to bed. You can't wake up with them in the morning. You don't take them to school. And it's just like, yeah, so once I had a family, I was like, I'm not. And I've talked to other actors about this. You know, Emma Thompson, she's like, oh God, I can't stand it. I'll mm. never do it again. Mer I, my friend Meryl Streep didn't do a play for, she goes, I can do a play for 20 years because of your kids, because you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I, lo I love doing it. I love doing it. But uh, it's still to this day, there are times when it's like 7.30, which is half hour in New York, right? Half hour, your show's at eight, they call half hour. So here, usually your shows start about 7.30. Yeah. Around 7.30, I sometimes get this slight anxiety <laughs> because I think I have to, you know, go on, I'm going to go on stage. And then I realize I don't have to, I can just... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i've heard about you he's been drinking yeah. right my friend adam i interviewed adam yesterday actually because he's furloughed at the moment big yeah. shout to adam when he listens to this but yeah. he he said he's he's noticed that you you were drinking a negroni yeah and yeah. it's campari gin uh soda and something else right i'm not no, quite no sure soda. i mean some people no soda. put in it but okay it's sweet vermouth yeah big problem though he seemed to think that you should have stirred it and not shaken it. And there was an uproar on, on Instagram, apparently, about this. Yes. <laughs> but, but so you, but you, you got here basically because of the slight tingle in the stomach. You're figuring that that's because of the, the dodgy Negroni, not because of the fears. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was, I, no, see, I happen to like my Negronis up rather than on the rocks. So okay. traditionally, you make it on the rocks and you give it a stir, you keep it on the rocks. Okay. I thought, well, I'd like to, I, I started experimenting with just doing it up, just to see what it looked like in a coupe. And it was really cool looking. And you put that slice of orange in, it's really beautiful, like the red and the orange. And then you okay. cook it. And that sounds good to me. Yeah, well, you know, the flavors come together more. Okay. Well, I know, I know. <laughs> you are, tell you know, Adam, I'm tell Adam, not. you know, I'm sorry to insult him, but you know. <laughs> I was drinking it, not him. He shouldn't worry. <laughs> I, there's no way I'm going to argue with, with with you about uh, with with uh, cocktails because um, yeah, I've been I've been checking out a few uh, a few stories and um, yeah, you know you know your stuff on that one. So uh, I'll leave I'll leave that for uh, I'll leave that for for Shalina to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> why so does your do you, how long have you been doing this podcast well this is my new one this is but i've been podcasting nearly for nearly five years now oh my god yeah and mike mike was on my first show back uh back then and uh unfortunately me and my business partner he went one way and i went the other and all the content basically he said oh i moved web host and it all disappeared and blah 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 so so I just took Mike's episode. I said, look, Mike, sorry about this, but I'm going to put this on a new show. <laughs> and, and I put it on a new show. Uh, and then I wasn't really happy with the brand. So now, then I created another brand, which is, which is better, which is more of, a, more of a business technology kind of show. But this one is called Positive Personal Power. And, are you uh, a, but are you a, what were you doing before you did podcasts? Uh, social media marketing um but really? but before that i was in the in the booze industry in the wine industry oh you were <laughs> yeah good yeah. person to know really thank you <laughs> <laughs> now we now, now we've got stan interviewing you now i mean i know i, I was oh. thinking hold on this is all wrong <laughs> <laughs> i like asking questions I so, do have more questions, though, Stan. Well, why don't you? Why don't you go with another question? Give me, give me, give me some. I've got one, right? So, when you played George Harvey in the Lovely Bones, right? You said I never wanted to play a serial killer. I don't like to watch things about serial killers or kids getting hurt. I can't stand that, really. But this was something beyond that. It was an exploration of loss and hope, and I'm glad that I chose to do it. So can you can you expand on that? Because that, I, I read that earlier and I was like, that's interesting. Well, because it wasn't, um, the movie wasn't, I didn't feel that that, but there was nothing gratuitous in the movie. Um, I, I didn't think, at least it, 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 in the script. I, I thought it was a really, it's a beautiful book and it was a beautifully written script. And it is, about how to deal with that how to deal with loss and and um you know sort of through a not magical realism but sort of through a fantastical way in, in a way yeah. but but there's some hard reality too in it in the film i found it very difficult to watch yeah it's tough. It's it's really, you, i i can't watch it because you, you 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 know you know the, the the kind of the narrative from from the from the grave is is something that's kind of a very unusual way of telling a story. I've never, I don't know if it's done, been done before, but I haven't experienced it. And it, and it was a very, very difficult thing because you, you know the inevitability of it, but you, it's, it's really hard to go through that process. No, oh, especially with a kid. Yeah. You know, she was absolutely or whatever, you know. Yeah. But that kid, who now is a woman, uh, is, she was just an incredible actress. Mm. So I think. That that's a huge part of why that movie works. Is well, you you were that. you were nominated for an Oscar in that one, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, yeah. So you played your. Yeah. Part I couldn't wait till that. That was a hard one. I, I that was the hardest, the hardest role I've ever played. Mm. I wouldn't do that again. It's too disturbing. No, it yeah. is. But, and, but I, and the story was have, important. Did you have to psych yourself yeah. up to get through those days? I oh mean, my god! Oh my god! Yeah. I, I I dreaded going to work every day. I dread, wow. and it went on for months and months and months. <sighs> months in, a couple of months in Pennsylvania, I was shooting, and then there was a, we took a big break, like a six week break over Christmas, and then we went to New Zealand for five weeks. Um, so you sort of have to keep it in there the whole time, you know, a little bit. Where did you go um, in New Zealand then? We were in Wellington, which is where Peter Jackson, who directed it, that's where he lives and has his studios and stuff. Super. So we were there in Wellington, which I really liked. And I was very lucky that my family came with me, my, my late wife and the kids were little at the time and my father-in-law came and, and that made it really, you know, if you're with your family, you know, it just makes it a little bit easier. No. Go yeah. On. But yeah. did did you feel that kind of um, I don't call it depression, but that kind of weight um, transferred beyond the set into your sort of home, into your into your real world, into your, into your kind of personal life at the time? At, at first, yeah, and then I was able to 
cut it, just sort of cut it off. So what really helped was because I sort of tried to, you know, I made physical changes. I wore like a, like a kind of little fat suit almost just to give myself a, a bit of a belly and then <laughs> teeth made and a mustache, a wig put on, we changed, you know, put makeup on it to make my skin lighter, put contact lenses in. So you're, you're transforming yourself. So that once you put that stuff on and you look in the mirror, you're not looking at you, you're talking differently, you're, you know, but as soon as they said the day was over, you know, they, they called rep, that stuff came off so fast and I mm-hmm. couldn't wait to get it off. And, and I'd have a martini with the, with the uh, makeup, head makeup artist, Peter King, who's an incredible guy. And, um, and everything would go away. And then it starts, of course, the next day starts all over again. But uh, I, w- I wonder if, um, you know, so uh, the kids are working from home at the moment, can't go into school. And, and I wonder whether the, um, the concept is similar with the, the teachers are saying to the kids, you know, in this kind of list of things they had to do when they first started lockdown was um, in the morning, get up at the same time, you know, go for your shower, get your breakfast, get dressed. Don't, don't, lo- you know, don't lounge around in pajamas. So, mm-hmm. so it's almost like that the whole, the whole act of presenting yourself in a certain way allows you to, to be that person that you need to be at that time. And it's almost mm-hmm. a similar sort of aspect of kind of, you, you're almost like dressing into a shape that, that yeah. allows you to be that and then taking that's, it all off. That's what we end. do, yeah. We put on our clothes, we go out into the world, we have a yeah. persona. Yeah. You know, and then when we come home, you know, people will instantly just change their shoes. You know, put yeah. on the old classic of yeah, person, thing, yeah. smoking jacket and a pipe, and it, you know, <laughs> you're a, and you're a different person. You know, well, you, you've been quite used to uh, you've been quite used to wearing wearing wigs and stuff, right? But are you, you, I mean, I'm surprised they they even bother to put wigs on you. Weren't you weren't you voted like eighth sexiest bald man or something? Was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a big <laughs> thing about you. <laughs> there was a big thing though. Adam said that these women were like talking about your biceps on Instagram yeah. the other day. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's weird. It became that that um, <clears throat> cocktail video. <laughs> there were lots of sexual comments. <laughs> I did not. I, I did not expect at all. <laughs> well, I, I think I think they're all they're all obviously justified. You've got a certain following there if you wanted to get into some <laughs> yeah, I know. Tom Cruise remake, like a, a, a sex worker for alcoholics or something. <laughs> Well, well, I was tempted a few years there. ago. What, what's that, Mike? Yeah, you go down your route and I'll go down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nat, give us another. Give us another I've got one. Well, so, what? so, right, yeah. how did you overcome, right, your emotions when you're going through these struggles? Obviously, martinis probably helped, yeah? But apart from martinis... How, how do you overcome these struggles that you have in, in, in your life for the past however many years? I'm not sure um, that they're relevant, specific ones he's referring to, but yeah. generally. Just in general, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. In general, I, you know, you, you have to rely on the people that you love, and that's the key thing. You know, a friend of mine is starting this big um, mental health uh, initiative in America, Kenneth Cole, you know, he is the designer and, um, you know, he's very altruistic and um, he was the head of AMFAR for quite a while. And, and he's starting this thing called the Mental Health Coalition now to help destigmatize mental health and to put, you know, to encourage people to talk to others about their anxiety or what might, what might be and mental illness or whatever. Um, and I think that that, for me, that's the key thing with, with anything, because, you know, after like my first wife passed away, that was very, very hard to, to deal with. And the thing, and the people who helped me were, were my friends and and my family, you know, and you gotta talk, you just gotta talk about it. Yeah. And oddly enough, they were more helpful than any therapist or in a strange way, they were more helpful, you know. 
why why do you think that is that that people because you often find that people that are close to you people say that it's not as easy to talk to them as it is to a to a sort of a stranger as a therapist i don't know i think i really think it depends on the situation mm. you know, i found that when i did talk to a, a therapist or about my about my wife dying I found that there was just a lot of general generalities that you could read in a book, you know, the stages of grief and, and you go, yeah, yeah, I know that. Like you sort of know it. Yeah. But when you, but to talk personally about, to it, about somebody who knew her, who, you know, who knows you for years and years, in that case, it was really important. In other cases, no, not, it's, it's good to talk to somebody professionally, I think. But. I guess. It's probably it's good to talk to somebody generally, and and you know if if you don't have that support structure around your family and and great yeah. friends, then then obviously that you know the the, the professionals are, are there as well. But um, yeah, you know, if you if you can talk, that's the main thing, isn't it? It is. It is, and I also think that you know, like we were talking about before, our kind of a kind of structure. You know, like you go in, you put the makeup on, you do the thing, you become the thing that comes off, and you have your separate. I think the structure is absolutely crucial. You know, it's like people who raise kids and they think, well, I don't, I don't want to say no to them. And you're like, well, that's stupid. <laughs> I mean, that's stupid. Why would you not say no? <laughs> my parents, my parents, the first word out of their mouths was no. Yeah. <laughs> and then what's the question? <laughs> and then, no. You know, but. Same. <laughs> hey, mom, can I? No. <laughs> Um, but I think that <laughs> I think that I think that um, the uh, I think that structure is super super. Creating a structure for yourself and maintaining a structure for yourself all the time is important. But especially during uh, times of grief, times of difficulty, uh, exercise is without question the single most important thing you can do for your for yourself by yourself. That's um, that is absolutely crucial on so many levels you know and then just doing you know if you're by yourself and you're suffering and what you know i, I really do believe cooking is a great thing great way to well i mean you'll, you'll be answering a few more questions about that a little bit oh, later. yeah later yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. but one thing in your in your film um uh, the big the big night which yeah. um which you you directed produced you wrote, wrote um, it in and art in it as well. Um, and and one thing, so we, we managed to managed to watch it the other night. And um, one thing that I really, it, the the warmth of the family between the two brothers was came through and everything. They they were almost like twins in the way that they operated. You know, you could yeah. see the dance that they did around a table at one point where they were doing things to the same table around. But the thing at the end of it, um, where you made it. You made a, a, a scrambled egg. Um, like a on, yeah, for, for, and 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 the the, the the scene was basically you made the scramb you know the scrambled eggs or omelet or whatever for, for the for the for the assistant in the kitchen. And you and what wasn't apparent straight away for many people, I guess it, it got me straight away was you you left a little bit in the in the pan, mm -hmm. and it, what transpired was you knew your that the brother was going to come in and have that third piece. So you were always mm -hmm. making three. Or he hopes that the brother's going to. Or he hopes it, yeah. Yeah. He hopes it, yeah. But but it was very, you know, the whole thing was very, the the, the connection between the brothers was very strong, and it was very family orientated. Yeah. Cool. I mean, to me, that's. Yeah, I mean, that's really really important, and and I think that what we tried to show in that, too, is that, you know, the brothers never touch each other, except for at the end of the, the last film. scene where they put their arm yeah. around each other, which is very which is the complete opposite of what you see in most Italian movies about Italians. Yeah. yeah. Italians, yes, they can be emotional. They can be, you know, sort of, <clears throat> and physical, but you would, I think people would be very surprised how in some ways uh, taciturn and reserved many Italians, many yeah. Italians are. You can see that. You can be passionate about something, but you might not necessarily like, uh, my parents were really never physically affectionate with me. I mean, I knew that they loved me and that, you know, but only in a time of maybe crisis or something, but they were, nobody was hugging each other all the time. I was the one who would be hugging more than, you know. 
<laughs> well, I think I think that's um, that's that's not a bad not a bad place to end. I think on uh, on this particular one as a hug from Stanley. Well, this is this is really fun. Thank you. <laughs> it's been well, fantastic. It, 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 it's just a, it's just a free a free a free meander through some thoughts and um, hopefully if, we, if people can take some some positives out of it then it'll be helpful. Well, great. Well, thank you. So. It's nice to meet you, man. Thank you. And how how do we how do we uh, find uh, Mrs. Tobin's uh, show? Because you're going to be on that as well, right? So I am. Absolutely. How do we... So she's at she's at um, Poshnosh Gal on Instagram. Um, that's G A L at the end. Poshnosh Gal. And uh, she's been, yeah, and she's been interviewing a bunch of um, uh, chefs lately. She did um, Sean Ranking yesterday. And so um, you're in good company, Stan. I know that. Didn't she do Michelle Rue or something? She like did that? Michelle Rue. Um, she's done Atokucha, Vivek Singh, um, lots of different people. And um, yes, yeah, she's building up. And this is only since the, the lockdown because she's been wanting to sort of help the industry generally because, you know, they're having a really tough time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I don't know when they're going to come out of it because when life gets back to normal for, for many of us, I think they're still going to be struggling. Yeah. Um, I know. But anyway, let, let's, let's hope it's sort of, uh, you know, look on the positive sides and let's hope this, this helps them when they're, whether they're sort of remote delivering now, which they are, yeah. or, or doing lots and lots of um, Instagram videos like you're doing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>